Welcome to The Weekly, a podcast brought to you by Calvary Bible Church with your host, Jay Ewing. I'm in the booth today with a great friend of mine, Thomas Milburn's in the house. Sorry for the delay and getting back after the first of the year. I had COVID. <laughs> I, my voice had COVID more than my, my body had COVID. I wonder if we could just start with who hasn't had COVID. <laughs> no doubt. No, no. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I had COVID. My voice was pretty shot after a few weeks of that. And so we're hitting re- record today. It's the late January. We're in the middle of a series called Beyond Blue. But before we get there, my friends, we have so many great things happening here at Calvary this spring, this January. First, you got to go to calvarybible.com. I tell you that all the time. You should just make it a home screen, maybe on your smartphone. That'd be pretty cool. Hey, go to calvarybible.com, select your campus, hear what's happening here at Calvary and on your campus. You know, I think about all the great things like Starting Point just happened here on the Erie campus. We have base camp launching. We have so many new groups starting up this spring. We want you to jump in. Also, my friends, if you're married, let me ask you, are you going to the marriage conference in a few weeks here at Calvary? Going down to the Springs. No one's going to be at church. It's going to be great. You're going to miss out. The marriage conference is happening. Sign up today. You know, the whole illustration of like, how much do you pay per year to keep your car tuned up and ready to go? Tires, oil changes, windshield wiper fluid, all those great things. You've got to pay some money sometimes to have your marriage tuned up. Hey, I've been married 10 years. I know that's true for me. There's a lot of people going that have been married longer than me, but we want to see you there, Colorado Springs. Thomas, I just got a fun reservation Saturday night in Colorado Springs at the marriage retreat. It's going to be a blast. A it's reservation be- for dinner? Yep. At like In-N-Out? Or- nope. We're- <laughs> no, I'm, I'm best friends with RJ. We're going to eat In-N-Out like Friday. <laughs> like, In-N-Out's going to be hit up more than once because, you know, ride together die together but hey i have a really fun restaurant we're sti- we're gonna hang out on saturday night at the marriage conference it's gonna be a blast it's gonna be a blast okay hey friends thanks for tuning in calvarybible.com like always the theme music is rolling out now the conversation is about to happen thomas how's the new year been my, fr- my friend you know it's it's interesting i feel i feel like i've shared this conversation with enough people so if i've already shared it with you Forgive me. But normally, it's like I leaps and bounds of optimism. It's the new year, the new you, five principles and habits to change your life forever. Make more money, lose weight, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> totally. That is January. That That's is January, January, right? You're like, January. yes. For some reason, it's like as the calendar turns, it's going to be a better day. And you stop eating chocolate. Yeah. For I, a little while. Yeah. Or like a day if you're me. But this year, it feels like the starting line. Like I just, I, I made it to it. <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's like a deep breath. Like the gun went off, and you're like, "All right, yeah, here we go." And then I just like start my no, slow no. jog. That is honest. That is really honest. But friend. you know, it started off better than I thought it'd be. It's, it's going. Yeah, we got to talk about something that's really, really pressing upon this conversation today. I drove by your house on Sunday. And there was a Bill's flag flying. Yeah, there was. And I was like, what the heck is going on? I assume everyone is a Bill's fan. Oh, my goodness. I'm a lifelong Cowboys fan, so I cannot be a Bill's fan. Man, it'd be tough to be a Cowboys fan right now. It's always tough to be a Cowboys fan. That's that's embarrassing. Since the 90s, it's been tough. All right, so uh, my Bill's flag. I have no affiliation with the Bills. (laughs) (laughs) I am born and raised in Colorado. Yeah. Broncos fan. I have like sympathies for the Bills mm. because they've been to four Super Bowls, never won one. That's right. I'm like, mm, it hurts. No, it doesn't. It hurts. So my neighbors are from Buffalo. Um, I'm sure they're avid listeners to this podcast. Not at all. But uh, they are from Buffalo, but they no longer root for the Bills because the Bills have hurt them too many times. Mm. So they went and found a new team. Yeah. Upon hearing this, I bought a Bills flag and a Bills shirt that says Bill Leave. <laughs> And I taunt them with it. Yeah, they must love you as a neighbor. Well, I think they're like, oh, you don't know the train you're on, man. It yeah. hurts too much. So totally. now I've been disappointed three years in a row, and I know what it feels like to be. 
That's hilarious. <laughs> so funny, man. But how great. I mean, like, I don't know who, if, if anyone watched that game, but yeah. I just, uh, seriously, I watch sporting events. I really don't even pull for anybody now. Mm-hmm. I just root for good games. Yeah. That game was awesome. And pa- Patrick Mahomes, that guy's epic. I'm so happy for them. That's really cool. A, another Chiefs Super Bowl? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's sort of nice that Brady's gone for the first time. In I was rooting one. for him. I, I was I, too. I like he's like 95 yeah. and going to win another one. I was excited. Yeah, totally. Okay, so you've we've been in this new series, Beyond Blue, this January season, and um, you've been traveling to the campuses preaching one sermon over and over again about fear. That's what I've heard anyways. I haven't listened <laughs> yeah. to them. I had COVID, man. I was like, I don't care. Like, when you have COVID, the whole world shuts down. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, with COVID, I didn't even, I was, wasn't was even watching TV, man. I was just like, I can listen to music maybe. I just felt miserable. But anyways, that was just my experience. But it, past month, you've been traveling. What have you noticed about the campuses? What do you think is happening here at Calvary? What are you excited about as you meet some new folks, revisit some old folks? that uh, you've known for a long time. What are you excited about? Yeah, it, it's actually been pretty interesting. We haven't done this kind of rotation in a long time, at least in the last, I guess, calendar year. So basically what happens is the campus pastors, senior pastor, end up taking a message, and we rotate between the, the, the campuses. And it takes about a month to get through. And one thing is always encouraging to me is when you're going to the newer campuses that, like Thornton, that, that Calvary Erie helped launch, right, so that you're, you're partnering with the launch of it, you get to go see families that you have loved and um, knew from your campus that have gone and been sent out as like you know, missionaries to a new community. Yeah, And it's just fun to revisit them and just see what God's doing on their campus and, and how God is just being faithful. And then to go back to campuses that were ascending campus to ours, Boulder, and see families that you grew up around and um, help launch you. And then they're just so excited for what God's doing on your campus. And just an encouragement. I think a common thread for me was that Calvary truly is a similar expression in three unique communities. Like we really believe in the local church, helping a local community, investing in a local community. And it really does take on a lot of that local community feel. Right. And at the same time, you step in, you're like, this is Calvary. Mm-hmm. Like, it's warm, it's welcoming, it has, you know, a great team that, of, of greeters that brings you into the church, um, the cafes, uh, the teachings. It's, it's very similar that you say, oh, this, this truly is my church. I love this place. And to meet so many new people that have come to different campuses over the last year that love Calvary, that have really just begin to love the community as well. Yeah. For my children, though, this was the best. Uh, I can't remember which campus. Yeah, we were I on. guess I haven't seen them in a couple weeks. Yeah, they've been they've been on tour with me. Yeah, uh, they hit, they jumped in the bus tour. Huh? They did, and they said, "This is great, Dad, because we'll get to find out who has the best donuts." <laughs> <laughs> I can answer that for them. How, who would? Okay, okay, that's a good question. Who who would you give the best donuts to? Erie campus. Yeah, that's what they said. Uh, yeah, yeah, Erie, and and Thornton. I mean, they had a they had a. You know, they were trying to flex yeah. out there. They had a strong brag. Yeah. But just didn't do it for my kids. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> they need to come home. Yeah. You know, home cooking is like, way better than any, any restaurant bought. Yeah. Just good home cooking. But it was great. I mean, the, you know, I told, you know, each campus this, but the staff that serves there, the pastors that serve there on a regular basis, the volunteers there, truly love that group of people like they just do genuinely love them and just to reaffirm for each campus hey i know your campus pastor we hang out together every single week and they're the same person on wednesday as they are on sunday that's right that's right that's why actually i created the weekly i wanted calvary to know based upon the conversations we record you know they're not polished they're not pristine but they're genuine and these these individuals who communicate God's word are the real deal in my, my heart. Yeah. It's good. I, I, yeah. So it's been a huge encouragement to be going and uh, back in Erie on Sunday and just can't wait to be back in what I would consider my, you know, my family. Yeah. So miss them and just can't wait to be back on campus. Yeah. You know, I think it's valuable if you're, you're on one of the campuses here at Calvary to visit the other ca- campuses occasionally, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, 
go to a different campus, experience Calvary. One, you know where the resources you're giving to go, right? Uh, we're in multiple campuses. We're multiple campus church here. Uh, I think it's also encouraging to see that you're not alone in your Calvary experience. Like what you experience on the Boulder campus is similar to the Thornton campus. And it's just helpful to know that there's so many people that are faithful to God, to God's word, to God's comings and goings and what he's doing in the world. And it's really cool to be on the campuses. It's really cool. Yeah, and I, and I also just love the model that God has led us to to do. And I was talking to a gentleman this week who comes from a big church model, and I wouldn't even consider us like this big church, but he said, I, I'm just so blown away and impressed with, one, your senior pastor's humility. I'm not the senior pastor, so that's not yeah. a brag on me. That's a brag on Tom. And just his humility to raise up leaders and then to give away authority. He said, you just don't see it anywhere. Usually there's a senior pastor who says, this is my message, and be me into campuses. Or this is my message, you go preach it. And here at Calvary, it's, nope, we want the local pastors, the local team, and the local congregation to have its own leadership and its own feel, even though we're yeah. under one elder board. So I just love the model. Yeah. It's, it's, it's localized, and yet we're together. Oh, man, that's why we need to continue to pray. Just pray for Tom, pray for the elders, just daily Weekly, we need to be praying for that same spirit, guidance, that to just be blessed, encouraged when they do the, give that away, and um, just praying for their wisdom and all this. Yeah, humble, humble leadership is contagious, mm. and and we've all I think been under leadership that's that's prideful, and mm. that'll, that'll eat people up. That will real quick. Yeah, it's really discouraging real quick. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So, why is it important? Do you think to talk about? Such ideas as despondency, lamenting, fear. Why is it important for Calvary to slow down and have a series like this called Beyond Blue and sort of open up God's word and talk about these things? Yeah, you know, if you've been around Calvary, you know Calvary's kind of bread and butter has been you know, teaching through books of the Bible and going through New Testament books, Old Testament books, uh, going through books in kind of different ways, but really that's the meat and potatoes yeah. of our that, teaching. That's us. Occasionally, elders, pastoral staff, we you know we're getting together and just seeing what what is the current condition of our people, and from time to time we'll need to do a topic specific series that kind of addresses some concerns. One of those concerns I think percolated up amongst the pastoral staff was people's just health, mm-hmm. their um, spiritual physical, mental, emotional health, especially going into 2022. 2020, a little brutal. 2021, not a lot of respite from it. 2022 seems like it started off a little tough. Mm -hmm. And just saying, hey, before we start the year, let's just talk about some of these topics that we're seeing in our culture. Um, We're we're seeing a lot of discouragement, despondency, people's clinical depression. Uh, We've seen suicides go way up. Mm -hmm. We've seen divorces. We've seen people trying to just like lock themselves away. And we said, you know, we want to address some of these issues and just talk about the hope. The reason I think it's important is because I think for for some people, not everybody, but for some people, uh, they think it's abnormal to experience these things. Mm -hmm. And so when they experience despondency, fears, doubts, um, despair, they're like, man, something must be terribly wrong with me. I'm the only one experiencing this. And I need helps to get me out of it immediately. Mm-hmm. And when you open up God's word, God's word is far more, I think, honest with us. That these great saints that we've been talking about, um, men and women of great faith, experience seasons of despondency, despair, doubts, discouragements. And you're going, okay, hold on. If they experience these things, perhaps it's not as abnormal. And perhaps what I expected, I'd like to always be happy, things to be going well, to just kind of go from vacation to vacation or whatever is not realistic, is not reality. And my quick solution of getting out of these feelings might not be the best, mm-hmm. as opposed to let me let me sit with them and see what God's doing with them to form me. Like they're formational moments, mm-hmm. and God's Word has a lot to speak about it. Yeah, it is a formational moment. You know, we, we see that a lot throughout the Scriptures. God gets our attention in pain, and He gets our attention in suffering, and he gets our attention in loneliness. So, of course, they would be formational, I think. So, you know, you talked about 
this sort of like talking about the whole person, the whole human being, the whole disciple of Jesus, who's made in the image of God, who is called by God to live a life um, for God, with God, um, those beautiful expressions, right? And then you talk about like in your message, even the one I haven't listened to, about how individuals see themselves in being spirit and body. Can you talk about what it means to sort of view yourself in a proper sense as you experience the day-to-day reality of life? Yeah, th- there's a couple big $10 words, you know, one of them is bipartite and then tripartite. Mm-hmm. So like, who is the human being? Um, how does the how do the scriptures reveal the human being? And Western civilization has been having this conversation for over two thousand years, at least since last Wednesday. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you know, so bipartite is that your spirit and flesh. Tripartite is spirit, soul, flesh. flesh. Right. Right. So it, it, they both agree that you're at least two spirit and flesh. And we we're just talking about how you know, in times of despondency, despair, discouragement, um, doubts feeling like I just need wisdom to know what to do next. We'll go seek counsel. And some people will go to a counsel that doesn't treat us as a whole human being. Right. So they'll address us as just purely physical. So you can maybe go to a counselor that addresses you as a physical human, but neglects faith, spirit. And we just said, you know, their helps will be limited in scope because they're only treating part of you. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you go to like a spiritual counsel, maybe it's a pastor, maybe it's somebody else, and they only treat you as a spiritual being, and they neglect the fact that God has made you flesh. Like, you need sleep at night. You need nutrition. Um, there are physiological systems in your body that God created. Their helps will be limited in scope. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, the Bible treats us as whole human beings, and so let's go to the God's Word that treats the problems that we're experiencing in both a physical and spiritual way. And, you know, this came up because... You were quoting good old Calvin over there in Institutes. No, I mean, it's the first page of the Institutes. It's one of the most famous quotes from Calvin. He says, nearly all wisdom we possess, that is to say, true and sound wisdom, consists of two parts, the knowledge of God and ourselves. And what he means by knowledge of God and ourselves is that we realize who God is and we realize who we aren't and how do we respond. It's really what Calvin's looking at. It's like, how do you understand that you're a broken individual, you're a sinner saved by grace, that you have feelings and doubts and disappointments, and your your the propensity to sin is there. Um, it's Romans all over again. So, like he says, how do we work this out? And that's what he does for the next thousands of pages. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think that's really important, like that we understand who we are in order to understand where we're going. And um, so often we, so often in our faith tradition, we're guilty of this, of being just spiritual beings where we go to a church and they only care about our spiritual well-being, which is right in some ways they should care about our spiritual, but in the whole, it's not a holistic approach to who a disciple of Jesus is. Does that make sense? I, yeah. You know, one way that I've seen this, observed in my conversations over the last three weeks is I'll meet people who are responding to something that I've said or something that has been taught and they have maybe a question of some other things that they've read Um, and they'll lead with their so to speak clinical diagnoses Mm -hmm. from maybe a doctor or a counselor and I don't even know their name yet or maybe I don't even know their their last name and they're already identifying themselves with this quote-unquote clinical disorder and I think you know Somewhere in here, fundamentally, before we introduce ourselves and identify ourselves with somebody's opinion of us, uh, we should first say, well, what does God say about us? Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, that can get a little hairy because you want to know like, what is our limitations and what do, what's our personalities and how are we uniquely wired and experiencing the world, that, which is different than the other person, which is great to know you. But I think we want to know, first and foremost, who does God say that I am? Mm-hmm. Um, before I start introducing myself and identifying myself with this clinical observation of somebody. Mm -hmm. It's part of it, but it's not me. Yeah, totally. It's more, it's a holistic view of individual. I love it. I think it's really helpful. You know, we had a, Melissa and I had a really good conversation about 
uh, we were talking about praise, or maybe it was us. I actually I don't remember now, but I mentioned, you know, my mom listens and she she occasionally brings up something I said on the podcast that could be accurate or not a hundred percent accurate. So your mom is the fact checker of this podcast. One of the many, yes. <laughs> so is John's mom. So <laughs> fact check true. Fact check true. Yeah. But, uh, you know, both of the Christians watch the podcast, but they don't listen, so they can't be fact checkers. Um, what works for you, he says this. I said this, actually, a few weeks ago when I was mentioning prayer. What works for you might not work for someone else, and what worked for you at one time might not work again. Adding, this is for me, this is a quote, I think the Lord does that so it doesn't become religious. Talking about prayer. And he says, can you speak to what it means when you say prayer works in the context and why being religious and praying, being religious about praying would be a bad thing. So as we talk about these things of despondency, limitations, fear, doubts, all those things that we've sort of been talking about lately here at Calvary, why is it, why do you think it's, it's dangerous to become religious about praying? Well, give me an example to just help me better understand where you're coming from. Yeah, let's say you're a person that, for five years, you could wake up at 5.30 in the morning and you would read your Bible, you would read a Psalm, you would read a Proverbs a day and read a New Testament, Old Testament. And that seemed where God would work. And then all of a sudden, one day, five years down the road, that doesn't work anymore. It doesn't bring you life. It doesn't bring you joy. It doesn't bring you comfort. Why do you think the Lord does those type of things? Yeah, probably to keep us trusting him as opposed to formulas or prescriptions. Um, he didn't give us the evangelism track, so to speak. No. I think often Jesus is, is giving us, what God's giving us is scaffolding hmm. to hang prayers on. So even with the Lord's Prayer, um, I mean, I, I memorize that prayer. I pray this prayer with my kids all the time. I want them to know this prayer. I think it's great to pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, I also think it's a scaffolding of sorts of like, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray not exactly what to pray every single moment of the day. Yeah. And so it is what I'd say is scaffolding that we hang our prayers on. Similar, I mean, in my little message, we were talking about Psalm 55 and how David prays. We're looking at his journal entries in Psalm 55, and I was just highlighting three movements of his prayer life. So the first one is you know, he's, he's honest about his life. This is the complaining piece. Then he moves from complaining to calling, which is presence. Like, I'm entering God's presence. I want to be aware of God's presence. Right. And then he has another movement of casting, which is the surrendering of current circumstances that the Lord would be his strength. He's going to hope in the Lord. Those are all really good descriptions of practice, habits, postures, frameworks. They're not to be the formula in prescription. So I think the prescription is like, ibuprofen like my head hurts every time i take an ibuprofen it works mm. that's not how it works with jesus like i'm not rubbing the genie lamp three times spin twice rub two more times right it's how, here's how do i posture myself okay so god is father okay that's that's a posturing thing and then i'm going to talk him through the lord's prayer mm-hmm. maybe at different times but i think it for, first and foremost it's that we would enter into relationship with him um even David, I think David is is the one who seeks the Lord's face. This is Psalm 30. It says, Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. It's like David seeking him, David singing his praises, and then just in a moment, it's like, wait, where did God go? Why is he hiding his face from me? And so David, I think, then turns this to, to you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Here, Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. It's like he continues to pursue, even though it seems like, wait, this quote-unquote formula doesn't seem to be working. Like God seems to have hidden himself from me. No doubt. No doubt. I think that's great. I think prescriptions, when we talk about being religious about prayer, I think prescriptions lead to disappointment eventually they can be helpful for a season you know i've had mentors and pastors and disciple disciple makers who are in my life who gave me prescriptions at one time or another for a season that were super helpful but 
once they stop working, you can leave them behind because it's about a relational, like you're saying about the life of David. It's like the, the framework more than the prescription itself. Cause you end up trusting in the formula, right? Right. right. And then when it doesn't or, work, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. And I, finding identity in it, the yeah. formula as well. Like, yeah. But that's not to not, I mean, here's the thing. There, there are beautiful prayers that the saints have prayed mm-hmm. that Jesus teaches us. Um, that I think we should know that we should use, um, but not as the object of our trust in, mm-hmm. but as simply the the movement towards God. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And so no those doubt. those things, you know, we talk about tradition versus traditionalism. Mm-hmm. So tradition is the living faith of saints before us, yeah. and traditionalism is kind of like the dead faith mm-hmm. um, that you're trying to like tap into. It's just like that's not what's living. No doubt. no doubt. It's so good that people write into the weekly at calvarybible.com. Ask those questions, those follow-up questions. If you're curious, you can always write us. So thankful for this question. Looking forward to your questions in the coming weeks. You know, I think also Psalm 42, as a deer pants for flowing streams, so my so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I think if you have that agenda that you thirst for God, He's going to meet you no matter what Yeah, in a lot of ways. And it might look different than you expect, but he's going to meet you because um, he loves to answer that prayer. I think that is the prayer. I mean, some people, you know, as we're going through these weeks, you know, kind of boil down every week too. Yeah. It sounds like I've got problems. Trust God. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> it's a bumper to, sticker. Yeah. I mean, to some extent, you know, it, it does boil down to that. Even yeah. Though we're trying to give us practical um, insights as possible. Like, hey, we should be journaling about these things. We should be honest about these things. We should record these things. Here are different things that you know the saints have done in these seasons that I think we can emulate. But don't take your faith for granted. Yeah. And I think that's where I've been at. Where it's like I just kind of forget how good it is to be a Christian. Mm-hmm. And so, if there's one thing I, w- I wish everyone would take away from you know the uh, from this series is when you have these feelings, they're not incompatible with faith, mm-hmm. as though. If you had faith, you wouldn't have these things. Right. It's not a moral dilemma. Right. It doesn't have to be. I mean, it, it could be. Yeah, it could be, I guess. Uh, so they're common. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you have a disorder necessarily. Though there are, you know, clinical diagnoses where we have to recognize that. But the second one is that God is present. Mm-hmm. So this is a common experience that we're having. God is a remedy for it, and his presence really matters. And so here are different habits, movements, that put us into the presence of God, that allow us to recognize the presence of God. And that's where we should be going to, is God is my help. Like, look at the one over here that trusts in their own wisdom, their own strength, their own cleverness. And then look at this one over here. Look at this beautiful woman over here who just has faith in the Lord. Mm. And I just want to grow into what she shows me about trusting God. So he'll be present with me. He'll reveal himself to me. He'll carry me through whatever I'm in. Mm. And you know what? I might have a long season. I might have a long season, but it doesn't mean that he's not present. That's right, man. That's such encouragement. Calvary, we hope you've been encouraged today. Thanks for listening to the weekly. Like always, you can write us at the weekly doc. Well, the weekly at calvarybible.com. It's been a while since I've said that. And then also you can always hit us up in the lobbies of your campus. Check in, say hi, Tell us you're listening. We'd love to hear from you. Also, check out calvarybible.com. Lots of great things happening in spring and above and beyond. Thanks for listening. We're always honored that you tune in, pay attention, and join us in these really good conversations. We love you. Have a great week.